just imagine objects that can easily wipe out all complex life on Earth in a fraction of a second. The deadliest objects in the universe. They can extract iron from human blood while being thousands of kilometers away. The electrons inside the atoms of any living body would experience a tremendous pulling force capable of tearing any living thing apart at the atomic level. But hardly anyone would have time to feel anything, since its deadly radiation would instantly destroy anyone daring to cross its path. But what is it? Let me explain. Like many other space objects, magnetars were mysteriously lurking in the shadows for a long time before scientists suspected their existence. As our observation methods improved, we started to record strange bursts of gamma radiation. Surprisingly, they didn't come from the sun, but rather from distant space. Scientists estimated the coordinates of the radiation source, but no one could explain the nature of this phenomenon. Finally, in 1992, Astrophysicists Robert Duncan and Christopher Thompson came up with a promising theory. It was later developed by the Polish astronomer Bogdan Pazinski and co-authors. The theory turned out to be quite consistent and clearly explained the strange gamma ray bursts. It turned out that such radiation was coming from objects that were later called magnetars. And now it's our turn to learn about them. Magnetars. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Magnetars are a special type of neutron stars that have an extremely long magnetic field of up to 1,011 Teslas. For comparison purposes, the power of the Earth's magnetic field varies from 25 to 65 microteslas. Magnetars originate from massive stars initially weighing about 40 solar masses. Like any other neutron star, the birth of a magnetar is marked by an actual galactic light show. Indeed, in order for a magnetar to appear, a massive star must explode into a supernova, overshadowing the light of an entire galaxy with its radiance. This gigantic magnetic field is not the only remarkable thing about magnetars. Their powerful bursts of gamma radiation can often be observed for many thousands of light years around. It was these amazing formations that allowed us to see the mysteries hidden in the pitch dark space. Magnetars are amazing outer space creatures. One can almost aptly characterize them with the word extreme, especially in the most unexpected and paradoxical senses of the word. By cosmic standards, magnetars are absolutely tiny. Don't forget that these are actually stars, albeit former ones. If the Sun has a diameter of 1,392,700 kilometers, then magnetars are only 20 to 30 kilometers. Not six or four digit numbers, mind you, just kilometers. Considering their humble size, their mass is enormous. Most of them are much heavier than the Sun. This is why magnetars' density, like that of other neutron stars, is beyond any stretch of imagination. The value will say little even to a savvy person, since such whopping numbers are hard to comprehend. Popular science gives the following analogy. A spoon of such a substance in a stable state would weigh hundreds of millions of tons on Earth. To put this into perspective, Burj Khalifa, the tallest skyscraper in the world, weighs only 500,000 tons. Another impressive point is the rotational speed of this type of neutron star. Most of the known magnetars revolve around their axis several times per second. While being so bizarre, 
magnetars are at the same time the shortest living space objects, with a lifespan of one million years or less. The active phase of the magnetar's life cycle doesn't exceed 10,000 years, which is followed by the magnetic field decay and a sharp decrease in radiation power. A magnetar is a one-day butterfly by space standards. Since magnetars are extremely rare, we only know 30 objects of this kind. 24 are generally recognized in the scientific community, while the remaining six are yet to be confirmed. Magnetars don't vary as much in terms of mass, shape, size, and other characteristics of mature stars. Therefore, the number of bizarre features discovered is directly proportional to the depth of the study, and that in turn is due to these objects' proximity to Earth. The closest known magnetar, called 1E2259-586, was discovered in 1981, long before scientists created magnetar theory. It lies 13,000 light years away from Earth in the Cassiopeia constellation. It's no more than 20 kilometers in diameter and revolves around its axis every 6.98 seconds, which is very slow by neutron star standards. It is the source of soft, recurrent gamma ray bursts. Yet, the word soft may sound misguided. This is just a characteristic. Soft gamma radiation is generated during energy transitions inside atomic nuclei, while hard radiation is emitted during nuclear reactions. These soft gamma rays can be powerful enough to cause big trouble, and we'll go into more detail on this in a moment. Typically, when we think about a space threat, we tend to consider only objects close by, an asteroid fall, or a super powerful solar flare in the worst case scenario. But how can something tiny by universal standards, lying tens of thousands of light years away, really harm us? It turns out, it can. The potential threat of magnetars to the Earth is shown by real incidents. These cases bring us back to the very first studies of these phenomena, when the term magnetar wasn't around. On March 5, 1979, at 10.51 North American Eastern Time, two Soviet Venus mission spacecraft, Venus 11 and Venus 12, recorded an intensive gamma radiation burst. From the usual 100 pulses per second, it skyrocketed to 200,000. The frequency increased dramatically in just a fraction of a millisecond. 11 seconds later, NASA's Helios 2 probe orbiting the sun registered a second flare. In a few minutes, it also reached Venus where it was registered by the American probe Pioneer Venus Orbiter. A few seconds later, a powerful radiation wave reached the Earth and was identified by the Vela satellite's detectors of the U.S. Department of Defense, the Soviet satellite Progno 7, and the orbital Einstein Observatory HEAO-2. The international comet researcher then registered the outburst before it left the solar system. This event was the most powerful extrasolar gamma ray emission ever recorded. It turned out to be over 100 times more intense than any extrasolar gamma ray burst known before. The culprit was quickly identified with two arc secondary accuracy. It turned out to be the remnants of a massive star in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which exploded in a supernova around 3000 BC. The object was named SGR 0525-66. A distance of only 165,000 light years saved humanity from some big trouble. A similar event in the early 2000s turned out to be equally or even more powerful. A sharp, 
and powerful stream of gamma rays was registered on December 27, 2004, at 2130 UT, coming from the Sagittarius constellation. If visible light were emitted instead of gamma rays with such power, it would shine brighter than the full moon. The flare lasted approximately 0.2 seconds. However, it managed to cause significant damage to the Earth's ionosphere. It was a well-known magnetar, SGR 1806-20, at a distance of just about 50,000 light years. In a split second, the magnetar directed at the Earth a beam generating 10 to the 40th power of watts, which is more than the sun emits in 100,000 years. If SGR 1806-20 lay at the distance of the nearest star, Alpha Centauri, which is about four light years away, it would take a split second for this enormous gamma ray wave to wipe out all complex life on land and in the upper layers of the oceans. The SGR 1900 plus 14 magnetar, located merely 20,000 light years away, even forced NASA to shut down the near Shoemaker Automatic Interplanetary Station sent to the asteroid Eros in 1998. The gamma ray burst could have easily destroyed the device. Our only consolation is that all the known magnetars are at a fair distance from the Earth. Only here, the word known sounds slightly alarming.